Hello back everyone. So um, in the last lecture, we have been talking about work and energies for a uh, rigid body and we have been illustrating how to calculate the work done by different types of forces, including uh, variable force, constant force, weight, uh, work done by a spring or work done by a moment, and also what the forces that do not uh, do work. So this is in terms of work, but we didn't talk about energy. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the energy of rigid bodies. So if we have a body like this, and let's assume that we have an X and Y axis at general point B here. So this is X axis and this is y axis. And we want to calculate the energy uh, stored in this body. I mean like not the energy stored, it's the kinetic energy of this body. So if when we talk about particles, we said that the energy and we uh, said that the kinetic energy T is equal to half mv squared. So here it's a similar thing. We, but here we have a body that the mass is not lumped and distributed across larger spatial scales. So we have, let's take a small mass here and let's call it dm. And this dm has a velocity in this direction called vi. So this is dm and this is vi. So if we want to calculate the kinetic energy for this small mass, ti will be equal to half dm vi square and if we want to uh, get the uh, kinetic energy for this body so it will be t and we will integrate over the mass and it will be half dm vi uh, square so this is how we can get it and we will have to do some geometry analysis so you will know that this how the mass is located and this is R and it has an X and has a Y and this is VI. So if we want to get VI, so we can integrate this. So VI will be equal to the velocity at B plus VI with respect to B and this should be equal VB and this should be equal to Actually, let's divide it to x and y. So we'll have vbx in the i hat direction. So if we know the velocity here, let's assume that this is at any general point on the body. If this is a fixed axis rotation at this point, so the v at b will be equal to zero. But let's assume that we have uh, b as a general point. So we'll have vbx in the i hat plus vby in the j hat direction. So this is this term plus the omega of this body, if we know that this body is moving with omega in this way, so we will have the omega and the omega, let's assume it's in the k hat direction. Let's, so let's make it positive, something like that. And it will be k hat. And we will cross this with r with respect to uh, r i with respect to b. So this will give us x, i hat plus y in the j hat direction. And if we are done with this multiplication and did all the cross product and get the value, so we'll have vbx minus omega y in the i hat direction plus vby plus omega x in the g hat direction. So we'll end up with this. And if we plug this into the uh, kinetic uh, energy equation, we will finally, after done with the multiplication and integration uh, across the body, so we will have that the kinetic energy of the body will be equal to uh, half mvb square minus vbx omega y m plus vby omega xm and actually this is y bar and we have the mass outside and this is x bar we have the mass outside plus half the i about b omega square 
So this is the terms that we have. So if we need the kinetic energy of a body in a general translation, so about like uh, uh, knowing some information about P, so we will have, if we know the velocity at B and also we know the I bar at B, uh, the I at B, so we can, we define the Y bar, the location of B with respect to the CG. So let's assume that this is our body and this is the CG and this is point P. And we need to know the Y bar and X bar of point P. And then we need to know the velocity of VB so we can get half M multiplied by VB square and then get use the Y bar and mass and omega along with the VB in the X direction. And also the same in the uh, X bar and M and VB in Y direction and also the half IB multiplied by omega square. So this is the general equation of the kinetic energy, but we will rarely use it in this form. So uh, we will have a specific conditions on this equation. So if the B coincides with the center of mass of the body, so if B is the CG of the rigid body, Something like you have a disc like this, and this is the CG, and this is how it's rotated. So this is point O or point B. So it's fixed axis rotation about this point. So B coincides with the CG. That means that X bar will be equal to Y bar, and all of these will be equal uh, to zero. So that means that these two terms, this one and this one will be equal to zero. So we will have our kinetic energy equal to T is equal to half MVB square plus half IB omega square. Actually, this is similar to the, uh, the particle uh, kinetic energy. We From before, we have the kinetic energy is half the mass multiplied by V square. But since the rigid body could be rotating, so we will add a new term, which is the I multiplied by omega square, which account for the energy, uh, the kinetic energy coming from the uh, rotation of this body. So this is our equation. And also this equation is uh, true if, uh, if the, if the B can size with a fixed axis um, rotation, but actually let's, let's keep it for now. So let's only have this equation box it and we will talk about fixes axis rotation in a few moments. So this is if the CG is coincides with B. Okay, so let's see how this equations will be if we have a translation motion or a rotate, fixed axis rotation or general motion. So number one, translation motion. And when I mean translation motion, I mean the rect linear motion and also the curved linear motion. Okay, so if the body is moving with translation, that means that the omega is equal to zero, which means that the kinetic energy will be only equal half mvb squared. That means that uh, we only care about the velocity of the body because there is no omega, just like moving this way. If I know the velocity of this body, Vg, so I just like multiply half mv at g square, which is equal to any point on this body. So this, all of them have the same uh, velocity of the center of mass. Okay, moving to uh, rotation or fixed axis rotation. For fixed axis rotation, the body is not translating, so the translating term uh, will be uh, excluded from here. So we'll have, and actually, let's uh, see how it works. Like, let's put the general equation and then see because it depends. So let's half t is equal to half m vg square plus i bar multiplied by omega square. So this is the general equation, and Let's assume if 
if the body is fixed, like let's is bent at the CG like this. So the VG is equal to zero because the uh, the VG is not moving. So we will end up with half I bar only this term multiplied by omega squared. But what if our body is something like that and has a fixed axis rotation here and the VG is moving. So it will, we will have MVG squared included in our term. And actually we can rewrite this equation in different form because we know that this is RG with respect to B, and this will be equal to the VG. So half M will be equal to the omega of this body crossed by RG with respect to B. And then this is plus I bar omega square. And this is actually squared as well. So this will be half M omega multiply by r and this is a square the squared plus half i bar omega squared so let's see what we can get uh, outside from here so we'll have half an omega square and we will have from here m r squared plus i bar and this is the definition of the uh, better axis theorem like you move the i bar from the cg to here by multiplying the distance r square by the mass of the body. So this will give you half i about 0. 0.0 multiplied by omega squared. So what we can learn from here that the kinetic energy for fixed axis rotation will be always equal to half i node omega squared which O is the point of the fixed axis rotation. So if you get I from here, I at this point, and multiply by omega squared will give you the, uh, the total uh, kinetic energy uh, for this body. So that is the easiest way. And if the body has um, a bend at the CG, so the I at the fixed axis rotation, I O will be, equal, will be, will be the same as the, uh, the I at the center of mass. So for fixed axis rotation, identify the uh, point of fixed axis rotation O and get the I bar at this point, uh, get the I, the mass moment of inertia at this point and multiply by the omega of this body to get the kinetic energy. Let's move to the third case, which is the general plane motion. General plane motion. So for general plane motion, we will have our equation very general, T will be equal to half MVG square plus half IG multiplied by omega square. So this is the general equation. So if we have a wheel like this, and this is the ground, and this wheel has an alpha or omega this way, so we know that this body will be moving. So this is the VG and this is how it rotates. So this is, let's put omega. Okay, so this, if we were able to get half MVG squared plus half IG multiplied by omega squared, it will give you the total kinetic energy. Also, if you were able to identify the instantaneous center of zero velocity, so this will be equal to half I about the instantaneous center of zero velocity multiplied by omega square. Because if we follow the same thing like here, it, we will end up with the same equation. So half of the mass moment of inertia about the instantaneous center of zero velocity multiplied by omega square is the same as this uh, equation. Okay, so this is our equations. We have this is one, okay, this is the main equation. And this is the one that we need. And this is another one here. And this is another one there. So this is the three equations that you will need to memorize so you can calculate the uh, uh, kinetic energy. And then we will be using the same concept that we used before for barcodes. So we will have that the T at point one, the kinetic energy at, 
at state one plus the sum of all the works from one to two will be equal to the kinetic energy at position two. So we will be using the same equation with the same concept that we have been using through the particle. So if we have a body that at this location and go at this location through a certain bus and exerted a lot of work, and this is position one and this is position two, we will calculate T1, the kinetic energy at one and the kinetic energy at two, and also all the work exerted from one to two, and then apply this equation to solve some, uh, 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 some, some for some variables, including like the velocity, the omega of the body. So you, we will be using this equation. So let's apply this equation on an example. So we have this example. So for this example, we have uh, a bar uh, has a mass of 10 kilograms and is subjected to a couple. So there's a moment of 50 Newton meter and a force B80 Newton, uh, 80 Newton, and which is always applied perpendicular to the end of the bar. And actually we can use this, it's always perpendicular. So the angle is 90 degree. Also the spring has an unstretched length of 0.5 meters. So there's a spring and this is bring actually it's allowed to move in x direction it goes like this and goes like that and remains in vertical position due to the roller guide so there's a roller guide here that allows us to spring to move this way and move this way so it can be vertical and determine the total work done by all the forces acting on the bar when it's rotated downward from theta equal to zero to theta equal to 90 degree so let's here's our bar a and let's actually name the other end we can call it a c or a something so let's draw a free body diagram to identify all the forces that we have here so the body started at theta equal to zero so the body was something like this okay and up to theta equal 90 degree. We will see when it's uh, 90 degree. Okay, so let's put the forces that we have. So we have B equal 80 Newton at this location. And the bar is three meter length. So we have a weight in the middle <coughs> like this. And we have a moment of 50 Newton meter. So this is M and also don't forget the reaction. So we have a reaction AX and reaction AY at this point. And also, so we have, we have a spring and this spring is something here at one meter and two meters. So the spring will have a tension up there, something like that. So this is all the forces that we have acting on uh, this rod. Okay, and at some point after 90 degree, it will be something like this. Actually, we can write it on the same figure. So let's make this a y in this moment is equal to 50 Newton meter. And let's draw the body after 90 degree, it will be something like that. So the forces will be, the B will be pushing this way because it's always perpendicular. So we'll have B equal to 80 Newton. And the F spring, like something like here, and the weight always go down and we will have the same moment and the same reaction. So this is how the forces will be. So let's see the uh, work exerted, uh, the total work done by uh, this rod. So let's get them one by one. Let's see what is the work done by weight. So line number one, work done by weight. So we'll need to know W delta Y and we'll, we will need to know the sign. So the sign, the weight was up at this location and then comes down to this location. So it moves 
all this distance down so it will be positive and the weight it's given uh, a 10 kilogram so 10 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by delta y which is the half distance of the rod so let's assume that this is our datum or this is our zero and then this rod come here so it goes down 1.5 meter so we'll put 1.5 and when we do this it will give you 147.15 newton meter and let's get the work done by the moment and we agreed that the work done by a moment is equal m equal to theta 2 minus theta 1 and we have the moment 15 newton meter and actually the body is making theta in the same direction of the moment so the work is positive so we have 50 so if the body is moving like this and the moment is going like this so that means negative work but we have both of them are in the same direction okay 50 theta 2 is 90 degree and we will need to transform it to a radian so 90 multiplied by pi over 180 minus theta one which is zero and this will give us 78.54 radian uh, 0.54 newton meter these the theta should be radian don't put degree here so this is the work done by the moment let's see what is the work done by a spring the work done by a spring we know it's always negative k multiplied by s2 square minus s1 square so let's find what is s2 and what is s1 as we agreed from before that the uh, the s2 and s1 is measured from the unstretched lens so it says that the unstretched lens of the spring is 0.5 meter and the rod starts from the horizontal as theta equals zero which the spring uh, having 0.75 meter lens that means it was initially stretched s1 was equal 0.25 meter so i got s1 how about s2 at s2 this part will be somewhere here like it will move and come here and this is the middle and this and the spring um, i don't care actually about the middle we will care about the location of the spring the location of the spring is here at two meter so we'll have two plus two plus 0.75 minus 0.5 which is the unstretched lens so this will give us 2.25 meter all right so let's put them here so we'll have negative five multiplied by k which is 30. s2 is 2.25 square minus 0.25 square and this should give us uh, negative 75 newton uh, meter of work so this will leave us with the last force number four which is b don't forget or you will have to account for all the forces in the problem the weight the spring the uh, the moment the b everything so the work done by b will be equal will be equal to p multiplied by delta s so let's see how much distance the b did so we know that this body is moving like this so it makes a quarter of a circle like that and the b is always perpendicular to the body is not a changing in angle so it always perpendicular at any piece of this distance so the the b is always perpendicular to the bass and the bass is a quarter of a circle which will be we know that uh, the circle is 2 pi r so we'll divide over 4 so it will be pi r over 2 so b is 80 newton multiplied by pi and r is 3 meter over uh, 2 sorry uh, pi r over 2 and actually you can get it in another way you can like say i want to calculate the distance of this curve so this curve is equal to r multiplied by delta theta in radian and r is equal to 3 and delta theta 
is equal to 90 degree and in radian I have transformed it to pi over 180 so this will give you two so it will be three pi over two so it will give you the same uh, thing so this will be equal to 377 newton meter number five do we have any other forces so let's check yeah we have the reactions but as we agreed from before that the reaction is not exerting uh, any work because the affecting a point that has zero velocity so this point is not moving so this reaction is not affecting the uh, the work done uh, by the bar so reactions ax and ay doesn't exert any work because VA is equal to zero. All right, so we calculate the work done by all the forces. So let's get all the work from one to two. It will be equal to the work done by the weight plus the work done by the moment, work done by the spring and the work done by the force beam. So this will be equal to 147.15 plus 78.4 plus, and actually we have the spring is negative, negative 75 plus 377, and this will give us 527.68 Newton meter. So this is the total work exerted by uh, this bar. All right, so this is for this problem. Let's solve another problem that has fixed axis rotation. Okay, so for this problem, we have a disk and the circular plate is, uh, has a fixed axis rotation about the center of mass O, and it has 0.2 meter radius, and it's under a moment of five newton meter. And there's a spring here that is unstretched. Okay, let's see, it's acted upon. The spring is originally unstretched, so at this point it was unstretched before it rotate, and it has K equal 10 newton meters. So 30 kilogram disc, has been supported at the center, determine the angle through which it must rotate. So what we need to find is the angle to attain an angular velocity of uh, two radians. So you are given the, the angular velocity, omega is equal to two radian per second. And it's starting from rest and it's acted upon by a constant couple. Okay, and moment is five, and the spring is originally on a stretch hit. All right, so you are given an initial condition that this body started from rest. Two radian is starting from rest. So you are given that it started from rest and ended up with two radian per second. So this is a work energy problem. So you will have to include both. So you will have to get T1 plus all the work is work from one to two will be equal to T2. The hint here, T1 should be equal to when you uh, when you look back at the fixed axis rotation here, it will be half I node multiplied by omega square here. Half I node multiplied by omega square and I node is the same as the at the center of mass because this is where the fixed axis rotation is. And omega one is equal to zero. So starting at rest. And let's get I node so we can calculate the, uh, the T2. So I node will be equal to, if, we, if you go back to your uh, dynamics sheet and see what is the circle. And we need to know the rotation about an axis perpendicular to this circle. It will be half m r square. And this will be equal to half and the mass is 30 kilogram and the r square is 0.2 square. So this will give 0.6 kilogram meter square. So we got I node, I can get T2, which will be half I node omega two square. 
at 5.6 and omega 2 is 2 radian per second so it will be 2 square and this will give us 1.2 newton meter so we are done with the energy bar so let's call this one energy and let's get number two is the word let's see what forces what we have here that exert work so let's draw a free body diagram so we don't mess any one of these forces okay we have been here all right so we have a spring force pulling down and we have a moment m and we have a weight and we have reactions at this pin let's say o o y and o x and weight and as we know the reactions will not exert any work because they're affecting a point of zero velocity so the reaction will be excluded from the work and also the weight is not exerting any work because it's also uh, 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 also uh, on the point of zero velocity which is the bend so the weight and the reactions specifically for this problem is not exerting any work and the only ones that can exert work is the moment and the spring so let's calculate the work done by the moment as we know it will be equal to the moment multiplied by theta 2 minus theta 1 and let's the moment is 5 and theta 2 minus theta c that 2 minus theta 1 it will be delta theta this is what we need to know determine the angle through which it must rotate so let's assume it start at angle 0 and let's get the uh, second angle theta 2 or you will get the delta theta so if you assumed that this is how it starts and this is how it ends so this will be delta theta and we don't know delta theta yet so we'll put work done by spring so the work done by spring it will be equal to negative half k multiplied by delta s square and this is the how much the spring was a stretch it because when the this rim will rotate this spring will move from this point to this point and it's saying here that the cord wraps around and the rim of the disc around the rim of the disc so here's the cord and it will wrap around something like that so this will be delta s of the spring and delta s will be equal as we know if we want to get a piece of the curve on the circle so it will be equal to r multiplied by delta theta we know r is equal to 0.2 and but we don't know delta uh, theta so this will uh, give us half multiplied by 10 and multiplied by 0.2 delta theta all squared and finally this will give us negative 0.2 delta theta square and the work done by the weight we uh, make it clear it will be zero so let's now apply the work and energy equation t1 plus the sum of the work from one to two will be equal to t2 t1 is zero so the work done it will be the work done by the moment five delta theta plus it's actually negative 0.2 delta theta square and this will be equal t2 which is 1.2 meter uh, 1.2 newton meter so this will be 1.2 and when you solve this equation it's uh, it will give you two one uh, like it will be like uh, something squared and something uh, to the power of one so you can use your calculator to solve this problem and then finally you will find that theta is equal to 24.75 radians and this is theta one and you will get another theta it will be equal to 0.24 radians and this is the solution that makes sense because this is a lot of radians so this means that at this moment at this moment 
with this moment and this spring, this circle, we're able to make a lot of rotation about this. So we don't know, we don't want to know how much it was rotated. We just like need to make, know how many difference in theta, like, yeah, it, it comes from here and get back to the original position and comes from here and get back to origin. So it, it keep making gradients, but I want to know the final one, like this a small one, 0.24. Uh, radians if you want to get it in degree. So theta will be equal to 180 over pi multiplied by 0.24. It gives you 13.75 degrees. So this is how much this moment will allow us to uh, do this theta. Okay, so with this, let's uh, solve another problem. And the work and energy, it's much uh, harder problem, but let's try it. So example, so let's draw this problem here. We have ground like this. And we have like a bar here. This is point A and this is point B and this is a frictionless surface and there is a force B equal to 50 Newton pulling this bar horizontally. This bar has an L equal 0.8 meter and a mass equal 10 kilogram and started at rest. On a frictionless surface. Find the angular velocity omega when theta equal to 45 degree. Like let's assume that this body at some point be like this. We need to find the angular velocity when theta equal 45 degree. Angle this is equal to 45 degree. Yeah, as I taught you, first thing that you will have to do as a, a, a free body diagram. So let's at 45 degree, this will be something like this. How about if we make it something linear like something like that. So this is point P and this is point A. Okay, let's see what forces that we have. We will have a reaction from the surface at A and a reaction from the surface at B. And we have a force B and we have weight W. So this is all the forces that we have on this body at this instant. And uh, we know that from the velocities, if you want to know how this body is moving and you want to know the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So let's have this body here. And based on what we can see, we know that this is dVB and this is dVA. And if we want to know the instantaneous center, we will be drawing a line perpendicular and a line perpendicular. So here we have an omega and this is the instantaneous center. And we know that this is a 0.8 and this angle is 45 degree. So this will be 0.8 cosine 45, and this is 0.8 sine 45. Okay, so we draw everything. So let's see what we can do here to get the angular velocity. So let's use the work energy. So here we will have the first, the, uh, let's do the kinetic energy first. It will be much more easier. So we know from here that the body started from wrist Make number one energy. Okay. 
Okay, but it started from wrist, so T1 is equal to, and this is a general uh, motion, so it will be half M multiplied by VG square plus half I bar, and we will have omega squared. This is what we have from before here. This is the equation that we have about you. So let's use this equation. And we know that uh, at rest, Vg is equal to zero and omega is equal to zero. So all of these will be equal uh, to zero. And T2 is the same equation, but we will uh, need to use the, uh, the final boundary conditions. And to do this, we will need to get the I bar of this bar. So if you, uh, if we want to get the I about this bar, we will go back to the uh, dynamics sheet and see how this body is rotating about this point like this. So it's an axis perpendicular to this one. So it will be ML square over 12. And the mass is equal to 10 and L is equal to 0.8 square over 12. This will give us 0.533 kilogram meter square. And um, if we want to get to T2, it will be half mvg square at two plus half i bar and omega two square. So let's calculate this. T2 will be equal to half multiplied by m, which is 10 vg, which we don't know, plus half multiplied by i bar 0.533 omega two square. And actually, we can get Vg as a function of omega from this point. So here, oh, we know that, mm, so we know the instantaneous center of zero velocity, and we know that G is here. So if we draw a perpendicular from the instantaneous center to this point, and we know the omega direction, so this will be the Vg, and the Vg will be equal to R G with respect to the uh, omega versed crossed by R G with respect to the instantaneous center of zero velocity. And we know the direction of VG and it, um, it doesn't matter because it will be squared. So if it's negative, it will be squared. So we will have omega and we need the magnitude of R. And we know that this angle is 45 and this angle is 45, all is 45. And we know that this is 0.4 because this is half the power lens. So R will be 0.4. So this will be omega multiplied by 0.4. So this equation will be something half multiplied by 10 multiplied by 0.4 omega called all is square plus half 0.533 omega two square. So this is, is only function in omega. All right, so we are done with the energy. Let's see what we can do with the work. For the work, let's see what forces exerted work here. So what moves? So the reactions is not exerting work. So NA and NB will do zero work. And the only forces that will do work is B and W. So let's see what happened here. So W was at distance 0.4 from the ground. And at some point, W came here at this distance. So let's see how can we uh, uh, calculate this. So So let's calculate this vertical distance. We know that this is 45. And this is 0.4, so this will be 0.4 sine 45. And the original one was only 0.4. So this is how it looks like. So let's get number one, the work done by the weight. It will be equal, the value of the weight multiplied by delta y. Okay, we have the weight is a 10 kilogram multiplied by 9.81 and delta y will be equal 0.4 minus 0.4 sine 40 
uh, five. And this will give you 11.493 Newton meter. So this is the work done by the way. Let's get the work done by B. For work done by B, so B is, so it was like this, and then it was like this. So B is always horizontal. So this is the distance that B cut. So let's get the distance parallel to B. So it will be half B multiplied, so no, it's not half, it's work. So it's B multiplied by, it's not energy, B multiplied by delta X. Let's say this is delta X. B is equal to 50 Newton. And delta X is equal to, we know that this line is 0.8 and this is a 45 degree angle. So this will be 0.8 cosine 45. And when we do this, it will give 28.28 Newton uh, meter. So let's use here the work and energy concept. Number three, work energy. T1, the sum of the work from one to two will be equal to T2. And we know that T1 is equal to zero. So we will have zero plus 11.493 plus 28.28. All of these will be equal to T2, and we got T2 up there. Yeah, it's here. And this will be equal to five multiplied by 0.4 omega, and all of these are square plus 0.267 omega square when you calculate all of these. And from this, you can get omega. And omega will be equal to 6.11 radian per second. So this is how we use the concept of work and energy to get the uh, omega of uh, this body. So this is the end of the lecture for the work and energy. And this is actually the end of chapter 18 of work and energy. You can stop the lecture at this point, but I'm going to solve right now another example just to practice more. Uh, you are free if you want to continue the lecture and watch uh, this example. If you want to escape it, it's fine. So just like an additional uh, working material for you if you want to uh, know more ideas how to solve problems. So right now, I'm going to solve another example on the concept of work, work energy. Okay, for this example, we have, this is a roof and we have a bar bin here. So this is a bin here. And we have this similar bar also been here. And there's another big bar attached to these two here. And we have this point also here. This is a bin. This is point A. This is point B. And this is C. And this is point D. Okay. And also, we have a spring here. This is a spring and it has K equal to 25 bound per foot. And the lenses we have, this is two foot. And this is three foot. So for this problem, the system is started from wrist.
and uh, DW. So let's call this one. And let's call this body two. So W1. So AB and CD have the same weight. So W1 is equal to 10 pounds. And we know that L1 is equal to two foot. W2 is equal to 25 pounds. And L2 is three foot. What is the angular velocity of A uh, B when theta equal to 45 degree. So this is what is required. What is the angular velocity for AB when theta equal 45 degree. So that means that we have our system at rest, okay, let's draw it here. And our system came to this point. And this theta is equal to 45 degree. So let's put the forces that we have on the system. Okay, so we know that we will have a reaction Px, Py, Cx, Cy. And we will have a weight in the middle here, weight two, and we will have a weight one, and this is weight one. Yep, and one another force, which is the spring force, so the spring will be stretched. So we will have a force here F S and a force here as F S as the spring is at these two points. So this is the forces that we have on the system. Let's understand the uh, motion of the system. We have these two bodies, this one and this one is a fixed axis rotation. And the fixed axis about these two points and this will be the V at D in this direction. And this is the V at A in this direction. And this body is moving a, a, a curve linear translation and actually the V at G will be in this direction, something like that and VA and VG and VD are all equal because it's a, a curve linear translation. So all the uh, velocity on this body will be equal uh, to each other. All right, so let's solve this problem and let's start by the energy. So let's put energy, there is number one. And actually this is a system. So you will have to calculate the work the energy of all the parts of the system. So for example, the energy of system at state one, it will be equal the energy of AB plus the energy of CD plus the energy of AD at the same state one. And as this system start from rest, so T1 will be equal uh, to zero. Okay, so let's see what is the energy of this system uh, when it comes to state two. So at a state two, for bodies A, B, C, D, for bodies A, B, and C, D are doing a fixed axis rotation, but for body A, D is moving curve linear translation. So there's different ways. Uh, to calculate each one. So let's calculate the various two bodies, uh, T, A, B, two. T, for fixed axis rotation, as we agreed, it will be half I node multiplied by omega A, B square. And this will be equal, we can calculate I node here, 
if you go to your uh, dynamics sheet, it will be one third ML square because we are calculating here, not in the middle. And this, each one of these bodies is 10 pounds. So it will be 10 over 32.2 multiplied by two square. It will give us 0.414 slug feet square. And let's get back to the TAB to, it will be half multiplied by I node, which we just calculated, multiply with omega AB square, which we don't know. And TC, D2 is the same because uh, this body symmetry is symmetry and uh, the velocity at D is the same and the velocity of A, so the omega here will be the same as the omega here because they are attached at the same point. So this omega will be the same, but so we can say here that this is equal to TAB2 and TCD2. All right, so we're done with the two members. Let's get to the third member, which is AD2. AD is making a translation. So for translation uh, or curvilinear translation or rectilinear translation, it will be half mvg squared. We need, we need to know the velocity of vg. And we know that vg is equal to vd. And from here, we can know that vd is equal to the omega crossed by rd with respect to c. So we'll, and we know that this is two feet, so it will be two multiplied by uh, omega. So we can have it here, half the mass of this body is 25 pounds divided by 32.2 multiplied by two omega all are uh, squared. So we got TAD2 as a function of omega as uh, well. And when you multiply this, actually we can keep it like this till the uh, end. So this is all the energies and let's get the work and see what is the work done by all of these forces. Okay, so let's get the work done by the weight for all the three members. So for uh, these two members, which are the same, we know, let's draw something here. So this is two foot, and this is where the C G is. And at some point, this body will be something here. And this will, let's assume that this, Let's do something else. Here is the location and here is the location. So the work done by the weight, so we have, this is the first location and it goes up. So it's a negative work. So this is how the CG move, it moves up, so it's negative. And we have two bodies, this one, and this is number two. So we will have two here. And both have the same weight, which is 10 pound. Let's multiply them by delta Y. So the first Y is equal to, let's assume that this is, not assume, this is actually one meter. And this, we need to calculate this distance. So we have, this is one, and we know the angle is 45. So this will be one sine 45. So it will be equal one minus one sine 45. So this is for this body. And let's get the second body, which is this one. Here's the center of mass and here's the center of mass. So let's see how much, uh, why uh, it was done here. Okay, so this, the start two meter, and this is the end. In this end, we know that all this body 
all this is two, this angle is 45. So this vertical distance will be two sine 45. So, and it's still negative and the weight is 20. Let's make sure that the weight is right here. 25 pounds, two minus two sine 45. And this will give us negative 20.5 feet pound. So this is the work done by the weight. Let's see what is the work done by the force. Uh, do we have, oh, sorry. I forget a force in this problem. Yeah, so we need a force P here. And this P is equal to 20 pound to make this body move. So this is the one that will exert uh, positive uh, energy. And also we have a moment here is equal to 15 foot bound. And let's put them here as well. And I'll put them in different colors so we can distinguish them. We have B, 20 bound. And we have moment M is equal to 15 foot bound. So let's get the, uh, the work done by these forces. The work done by force B will be equal to B multiplied by the delta S. And it's positive because the motion is the same way in the same way of the force. So B is 20 pound and delta S is this distance. And we know that this is two meter, uh, two feet and this angle is 45. So the distance will be equal to two cosine 45 and this will be equal 28.28 uh, feet bound. The work done by the moment, uh, we know the moment and we know the delta theta is 45 degrees. So the moment is uh, 15 and delta theta is 45. And let's transfer it to radians. 45 multiplied by pi over 180. This will give 11.78 bound as a positive bound foot as a positive work. And let's get the work done by the spring. So the spring is always negative and K multiplied by S2 square minus S1 square. So let's see what is S1 and what is S2. We know half and the spring has 25. So let's get S2 and S1. So for S1 of the spring, it was something like this, and we know this distance is three and this distance is two. So it will be root three square plus two square. But after the extension, this spring will be somewhere here. And, and this distance, so like that. So we added something here in this uh, direction. And this distance is completely different. We just calculated this, it was two sine 45. And I know that this part is three meter, but we have two cosine 45 here. Okay, so this will be, let's calculate them here. Okay, it's 25. And let's get the S2 square. So this line is three plus two cosine 45 square. And the other one is two plus two sine 45 square. And all of these, oh, this should be. Actually, um, I think I'm calculating delta S because I don't know the unstretched lens. So what I'm doing here is delta. So let's just make this clear. I don't know the unstretched lens of this spring. So what I will do, I will calculate delta S square. I know the initial position. So this will be negative half K and this will be S2 minus S1 square and this is the initial s1 and this is the final which is completely different from the other one which was s2 square minus s1 square because 
I will use this if I know the uh, the unstretched lens. But if the unstretched lens is not given, I will be using delta s. And to get delta s, I will need to identify the initial and final position and subtract them from each other. So I got the final lens, and let's subtract this. Let's subtract the root three square minus two square, and all of these will be square. So this is the L final, and this is the L node. I subtract them to get delta S. So this will give us negative 13.25 bound foot. All right, so let's uh, move, uh, let's actually sum all of these work, sum the work from one to two. It will be the work done by the weight, negative 20.5, 28.28 28 plus 11.78 minus the work done by the spring. This will give us 6.31 pound foot. And let's apply the work energy principle. For the work energy principle, we will have T1 plus the work U1 to 2 equal to T2. So this will be 0 plus 6.31 will be equal to the T2 that we calculated here. So this one, we have two of them and we have this one. So we will have three bodies with three uh, kinetic energy. So we'll have 0 0.207 multiplied by omega square. And we have another one because there are two of them, omega square plus the third one, this one. And this will be equal to 0 0.388 omega square. And this will be only function of omega square and we'll finally get the omega equal 1.79 radian per second. All right, so this is just an extra problem to uh, the concept of work and energy, just like to make sure that you get enough practice. If you want to look on this problem, it's fine. If not, it's totally fine. Um, uh, so this is the end of chapter 18 and on Wednesday we will be starting uh, the last chapter in the dynamics course which will be focused on the impulse and uh, momentum. Uh, see you guys on Wednesday. Thanks.